An elective monarchy is a monarchy ruled by an elected monarch, in contrast to a hereditary monarchy in which the office is automatically passed down as a family inheritance. The manner of election, the nature of candidate qualifications, and the electors vary from case to case. Historically it is not uncommon for elective monarchies to transform into hereditary ones over time, or for hereditary ones to acquire at least occasional elective aspects. Evolution. Eventually, however, most elected monarchies introduced hereditary succession, guaranteeing that the title and office stayed within the royal family and specifying, more or less precisely, the order of succession. Today, almost all monarchies are hereditary monarchies in which the monarchs come from one royal family with the office of sovereign being passed from one family member to another upon the death or abdication of the incumbent. Historical examples Europe Macedon The kings of Macedon and of Epirus were elected by the army, which was similar in composition to the Ecclesia of Democracies, the Council of All Free Citizens. Military service often was linked with citizenship among the male members of the royal house. Rome In the ancient kingdom of Rome, the kings were elected by the assemblies. Once the Roman kings were overthrown, there remained an absolute prohibition for royal establishment in the Roman constitution, a prohibition which formerly remained in place during imperial times, both Roman and Byzantine, although in practice the empire was an absolute monarchy. Therefore, the office of Roman and Byzantine emperor remained vaguely elective and heredity never was, and could never be formally established in law. In order to bypass this prohibition and ensure dynastic continuity, many reigning Byzantine emperors had their heirs crowned co-emperor so that the throne could not be considered vacant at their own death and thus the need for succession by election would not arise. Serbia In medieval Serbia a strong level of collective parliamentarism was evolved, which elected the prince. The rulers often in respect to tradition remained a member of the dynasty, even more so with the recognition as a kingdom in 1077 and the title's restoration after loss in 1217 which strengthened the monarch's authority. However they were elected all the way until of the imperial period. It was only in the Byzantine modeled later Serbian despotate that the monarchy was de facto transferred into a hereditary monarchy. Holy Roman Empire The Holy Roman Empire is perhaps the best known example of an elective monarchy. However, from 1453 to 1740, the Habsburg was always elected emperor, becoming unofficially hereditary. During that period, the emperor was elected from within the House of Habsburg by a small council of nobles called Prince Electors. The secular electoral seats were hereditary. However, spiritual electors' bishops were usually elected by the cathedral chapters as religious leaders, but simultaneously ruled as monarch of a territory of imperial immediacy. Thus the prince bishoprics were elected monarchies too. The same holds true for prince abbeys, whose prince abbesses or prince abbots were elected by a college of clerics and imperially appointed as princely rulers in a pertaining territory. Scandinavia Originally, the kings of Sweden were elected by all free men at the Mora thing. Elective monarchy continued until 1544, when the Riksdag of the estates designated the heirs of King Gustav Vasa as the heirs to the throne. The Danish monarchy was also officially elective, although the eldest son of the reigning monarch was usually elected. This continued until 1660, when a hereditary and absolute monarchy was instituted by Frederick III. Though the monarchy of Norway was originally hereditary, it too became elective in the 12th and 13th centuries. Candidates had to be of royal blood, but the kingship was elected by a council of noblemen, rather than automatically passing to the eldest son. In 1905 Prince Karl was elected King of Norway, after the male population in an election decided Norway should still be a monarchy. The Scandinavian kingdoms were united under the Danish crown by Margaret I of Denmark in 1389. 
but many of her successes had the United Kingdom split up as Sweden elected a different king than Denmark and Norway upon succession. The election was usually contested through a Danish invasion of Sweden until Christian II of Denmark after his reconquest of Sweden had all those voting against him executed in the Stockholm bloodbath which ended all support for the Danish king on the Swedish throne. In modern times the Norwegian people voted yes to allow Prince Karl of Denmark to ascend to the Norwegian throne as king of Norway, where he took the name Haken VII, and O would have forced Norway to become a republic. Poland in Poland, after the death of the last Piast in 1370, Polish kings were initially elected by a small council, gradually, this privilege was granted to all members of the Szalokta, kings of Poland and grand princes of Lithuania during the times of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth were elected by gatherings of crowds of nobles, at a field in Wola, today a neighborhood of Warsaw, since in Poland all sons of a noble were nobles, and not only the eldest. Every one of an estimated 500,000 nobles could potentially have participated in such elections in person, by far the widest franchise of any European country at the time. During the election period, the function of the king was performed by an interrex. This unique Polish election was termed the free election. Venice The Republic of Venice employed an elaborate system whereby a great council, consisting of over 2,000 Venetian aristocrats, elected a head of government, known as a doge, who served for life. The republic was therefore controlled by the city's wealthy noble elite. The title doge derives from the Latin dux and corresponds to the English word duke. Malta in 1800, leaders in Malta drafted a Declaration of Rights which was presented to the British Admiral Sir Alexander Ball, stating that they agreed to come under the protection and sovereignty of the King of the Free People, His Majesty the King of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, regarding the rule of the British King preferable to that of Napoleon's. France and of the Knights of Malta, the two other choices available to them at the time. The declaration further stated that, His Majesty has no right to cede these islands to any power, if he chooses to withdraw his protection, and abandon his sovereignty, the right of electing another sovereign, or of the governing of these islands, belongs to us the inhabitants and aborigines alone, and without control. Other examples A system of elective monarchy existed in Anglo-Saxon England, Visigothic Spain, and medieval Scandinavia and in the Principality of Transylvania. Medieval France was an elective monarchy at the time of the first Capetian kings. The kings however took the habit of, during their reign, having their son elected as successor. The election soon became a mere formality and vanished after the reign of Philip II of France. At the start of the 20th century, the first monarchs of several newly independent nations were elected by parliaments. Norway is the prime example. Previously, following precedent set in newly independent Greece, New nations without a well-established hereditary royal family often chose their own monarchs from among the established royal families of Europe. The first king of Belgium, as well as the now deposed royal families of Greece, Bulgaria, Albania and Romania, were originally appointed in this manner. Africa In Africa, the Mali Empire functioned as both a constitutional and elective monarchy. The Mansa, or Emperor, had to be approved by the great assembly known as the Gibara. Despite hereditary claims, the Kingdom of Congo was a pure example of an elective monarchy, where blood claims had even less pull. Nobles elected a king's successor, and it was common for the successor to be of a different family as his predecessor. This form of elective monarchy existed in the kingdom from its inception in around 1400 until its complete disintegration in the early 20th century. 
In the pre-colonial period, a number of West African rulers, such as the kings and chieftains of the Yoruba people, were elected from amongst the various royal families of their polities by colleges of noblemen known as kingmakers. Asia and Oceania The ancient Korean kingdom of Silla elected its first king by a conference of tribal and village elders in 57 BC. Later, the monarchy of Silla became hereditary in nature. Gopala, the first emperor of the Pala Empire was chosen by independent regional war chiefs in the 8th century. In the Mongol Empire, the great Khan was chosen by the Karelte. In the Islamic world the caliphs, successors to Muhammad, were originally elected by consensus of the community. The first four caliphs were elected in this fashion as Sunni Muslims believed Muhammad had originally intended before Muawiyah, the fifth caliph, turned the caliphate into what is known as the Umayyad dynasty, a hereditary monarchy. In Sunni Islam, the first four elected caliphs were remembered as the four rightly guided caliphs. They were elected by a process known as shura. Other monarchs, such as the former Shah of Iran, have been required to undergo a parliamentary vote of approval before being allowed to ascend to the throne. In 1858, the central tribes of North Island elected Potatoute Werifero as their monarch. The Tainui tribal elders have continued this tradition and the New Zealand Maori Kangi Tanga movement alive to the present. The Kingdom of Hawaii was a constitutional elective monarchy until its overthrow. In the United Arab Emirates, the hereditary emirs of the Emirates elects one of themselves as president of the federation. The Americas Mexico the Tolato anime of the Aztec Empire were chosen by a council of elders, nobles, and priests. He would be selected from a pool of four candidates. United States An attempt to create an elective monarchy in the United States failed. Alexander Hamilton argued in a long speech before the Constitutional Convention of 1787 that the President of the United States should be an elective monarch, ruling for good behavior and with extensive powers. Hamilton believed that elective monarchs had sufficient power domestically to resist foreign corruption. Yet there was enough domestic control over their behavior to prevent tyranny at home. His proposal was resoundingly voted down in favor of a four-year term with the possibility of re-election. In his later defense of the Constitution in the Federalist Papers, he often hints that a lifetime executive might be better, even as he praises the system with the four-year term. Haiti The Empire of Haiti, established in 1804, was also elective. Election In a hereditary monarchy, election may occasionally be used to fill her vacant throne. For example, the royal family may become extinct, depending on how precisely the succession to the throne is defined in law. Several candidates with equally, or almost equally, strong claims could emerge, with an election being held to choose from among them. This differs from a formerly elective monarchy in that it is an extraordinary measure, and with the new monarch the succession again becomes hereditary. Alternatively, the monarch may be deposed, as in a revolution, while sometimes a monarch may be forced to abdicate in favor of his or her heir. On other occasions the royal family as a whole has been rejected, the throne going to an elected candidate. Examples include John of England, chosen by a council of nobles and royal advisers at the death of his brother, Richard I because the heir by strict primogeniture, Arthur of Brittany, was a child at that time. Henry IV of England, chosen by Parliament to replace Richard II. Richard was childless, and the Earl of March, the next in line to the throne, was a young child at the time. So Parliament bypassed him in favor of Henry, who had led the revolt against Richard, Michael of Russia, chosen by Izemsky Sobor after the extinction of the Ruriki dynasty and the end of the time of troubles. The resulting Romanov dynasty was an old boyar house with the close ties to the former royalty, and Michael's father, Theodore Romanov, was at the time a patriarch of Moscow and all Russia under the monastic name of Filiere, in effect holding a position of interrex. 
Later, Patriarch Philaret, a skilled politician in his own right, became effectively a co-ruler and sometimes a regent for his weak and not very healthy son. William III and Mary II of England, chosen by Parliament to replace James II, while Mary was James' daughter, and William and Mary were succeeded by Mary's younger sister Anne. The male descendants of James II were explicitly bypassed in the orders of succession of the late 17th and early 18th centuries. John I, then master of the Order of Aviz was elected by the Council of the Kingdom, King of Portugal, on 6 April 1385 in the aftermath of 1383-1385 crisis. His half-brother Ferdinand I had died without a male heir in October 1383. Strenuous efforts were made to secure the throne for Princess Beatrice. Ferdinand's only daughter and queen consort of Castile and Leon or her uncles Infante John, Duke of Valencia de Campos and Infante Denis, Lord of Sifuentes, but the council elected the younger and yet illegitimate son of Peter I. Louis Philippe of France, elected king during the July Revolution, current uses. Currently, the world's only true elective monarchies are Malaysia, where the Yang Dai Pertuan Agong is elected to a five-year term. Nine hereditary rulers from the Malay states form a council of rulers who will determine the next Agong via a secret ballot. The position has to date been de facto rotated amongst the state rulers, originally based on seniority. Additionally, the Malaysian state of Negri Sembilan is itself an elective monarchy, where the Yang Dai Perchu and Bissar of Negri Sembilan is selected by a council of ruling chiefs. The ruling chiefs themselves are elected by the chieftain. Male candidates have determined based on matrilineal clan. The system was partially the basis for the federal monarchy. The Sultan of Perak is selected from amongst the Mosai male princes descending from the 18th Sultan of Perak, Sultan Amadine. The Sultan, Raja Muda, and Raja Dihili are selected by the Juin Nagar of Perak. A son of the reigning Sultan cannot become Raja Muda if there is a more senior prince descendant from the previous Sultan. This is possible should the senior prince relinquish his right to become Raja Muda. Cambodia, where the king is chosen for a life term by the royal council of the throne from candidates of royal blood. The Holy See and the associated Vatican City State, where the Pope is elected in a conclave by the College of Cardinals generally from among their number. Ambiguous case Samoa was established as an elective monarchy upon its independence in 1962. The constitution of Samoa stipulates successes to the two original heads of state, Muli Atoatan Umafili II and Tupua Tamasis Miola, who were one of the four paramount chiefs, are to be elected for five-year terms by the Fono, the Samoan parliament. Articles 18 and 45 of the Constitution provide, respectively, that any member of Parliament may be elected head of state, and that any Samoan citizen may be elected to Parliament, although 47 out of the 49 seats in the Fono are reserved for Matai, or chiefs. Thus Samoa could possibly be considered a parliamentary republic, however, the head of state is still referred to as His Highness. Nor does the Constitution expressly declare that the form of government has been changed. The incumbent, Tufuguri Fi, is also one of the four paramount chiefs and the son of Tupua Tamasis Miola. Similar forms Andorra could be considered a semi-elective principality. Andorra's two heads of state are Spain's Bishop of La Res Eu de Gelum, since 1589, the King of France. As the French monarchy has long since been eliminated, the position of co-prince of Andorra falls to the democratically elected president of France. However, the Andorran authorities or people have no say in the election of the president of France, leaving Andorra in the unique position of having a monarch who is democratically elected by the citizenry of another state. Swaziland has a form of quasi-elective monarchy. In Swaziland, no king can appoint his successor. Instead, the royal family decides which of his wives shall be great wife and Indivukazi. 
the son of this great wife will automatically become the next king. The eldest son is never appointed successor as he has other ceremonial roles. Nigerian traditional rulers are usually chosen by a council of kingmakers. Saudi Arabia's throne, while hereditary, is not determined by a succession law but rather by consensus of the House of Saud as to who will be Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. Consensus may change depending on the Crown Prince's actions. Since 2007, the process of establishing the consensus of the House has been institutionalized in the form of the Allegiance Council, comprising the most powerful senior princes which has the power to disapprove the king's nominee for crown prince and substitute its own by simple majority vote. In effect, this makes the Saudi monarchy elective within the House of Saud, as the king's eldest son has not become crown prince since the death of King Abdulaziz ibn Saud in 1953. United Arab Emirates has a president. This is a de facto hereditary position belonging to the Emir of Abu Dhabi. Thus, although elected by the Supreme Council, the president is essentially hereditary. The Emir of Abu Dhabi holds the position. The Maori King movement in New Zealand chooses a Maori monarch, elected by the Count Matua of various New Zealand iwi. However, every Maori monarch to date had been succeeded by a son or daughter, making the position hereditary in effect. Wallace and Fortuna have traditional heads of the three regions who are elected.